She sat down in the comfortable chair, not quite sure what she had expected from the office of one of the former Lord Admirals of the Navy. It certainly wasn't the small room full of bookcases and artifacts she found herself in. She took a good look at the man himself, noticing the lightning of the feathers around his eyes, showing his age and wisdom according to old Marcotti culture. Thank you for allowing me this interview, Lord Admiral Kuroku, she said, dipping her head slightly. I understand it is a bit of a sore subject to you. The man sent her a smile, his small fangs on display in a rare show of openness. Please, Miss Herrick, it has been a long time since I held that title. Just Kuroku will suffice. She nodded. All right, Mr. Kuroku, do you mind if we begin? He waved his hand. By all means. She took a moment to compile her questions, activate her recording program, and take a deep breath. Mr. Kuroku, thank you for having me. You were the lead admiral in the Gamma Equina Cluster Campaign, and you describe this in your new autobiography, The Art of Not Fighting Humans. Can you give us a quick summary of the factors leading up the conflict? The former admiral sat back and looked out of the window. Two decades ago, we came into conflict with the Federated Systems, the human government, over a small cluster to our galactic east. It was a small cluster, but very strategically important. The one who held it would have access to several jump points into the other's space. Suffice to say that when the humans staked their claim there, the assembly reacted badly. He looked at her again. There were some token negotiations, but in the end the politicians trusted the military more than the diplomats. He chuckled. It never ceases to amuse me how quickly they changed their tune. So you immediately declared war on the Federated Systems? He took a moment to gather his thoughts. Yes, but I think it is important to nuance that statement a bit. She looked at him curiously. How so? He shifted in his seat. Well, war in those days meant something else to us. We were expecting to go into the cluster, fight some token battles, and then take the systems and the industry with minimal loss of life. That is how it had gone between the major galactic powers for centuries, you see. We knew the humans were militarily inferior, so we didn't expect the strategic car bash we found ourselves in, if you'll excuse my language. I see. So what happened that turned the campaign into such a car bash, as you put it? He took another moment. Have you ever heard of Quintus Flavius Maximus? She shook her head, motioning for him to continue. He was a human military tactician who lived several millennia ago. He famously avoided battle with a feared enemy opponent. Herrick frowned. Excuse me, he avoided battle. How did that help him win? Well, what he did was deny the enemy direct confrontation, harassing him as he chased down his army. This way, he preserved his own forces while weakening the enemy. Right, and this is what happened in the Gamma Equina Cluster, she asked. Yes, to an extent. The leader of the human forces, Commodore Ruth Bailey, if I remember correctly, knew she couldn't face us in open battle with her fleet of light patrol vessels. All she had was a heavy cruiser and two light carriers as frontline battle units. We figured she'd surrender as soon as we entered the Hecate system, but when we jumped in there was nobody there except for automated weapons platforms and mines. He shuddered and his feathers rolled over his head. And the drones, of course, those never damned enough drones. Did you know that a human light carrier can hold up to 3,000 combat drones? Absolutely mad, I tell you. Noticing he was getting slightly off topic, she directed him back. And how did this impact the campaign as a whole? It slowed us down, mostly. We thought them cowardly and craven for fleeing from battle, a battle that could end the war in one go but they seemed adamant on bleeding us for every light second we took. Every time we entered a system, the human fleet, if you could call it that, was already leaving, having filled the system with minefields, drones, jammers, the like. We lost most of the light units like that, never mind the raids. The former admiral shook his head. It was frustrating to say the least. Harrowing, even. Harrowing how? Imagine the following, Miss Herrick. You are on a ship, a battleship in the mighty assembled navy, almost untouchable unless the enemy has ships of equal size or a ship killer. You might be safe, but the other ships aren't. Imagine people, friends, family. What will you on smaller ships dying to traps and hostels that are gone before you can orient the guns enough to do anything about them? They are dying and you can do nothing about it. 
There was a new glint in his eye, almost mad. That sounds... I don't... I don't have the words for it. Exactly. The man seemed almost happy that he had someone to share the pain with. Not so strange I retired after the war, is it? Definitely not, sir, but why do you call it a debacle? The human fleet was destroyed in the Battle of Galatia 11, 3, and mostly due to your strategic genius. <laughs> he huffed. Strategic genius? Is that what they call sacrificing 10,000 lives to kill a fleet of three ships and their escorts? The only reason we got them into direct battle was because there was a dockyard there. Thousands of civilians. They couldn't not protect them. He sighed, the feathers by his mouth rustling. I lost seven cruisers, twelve frigates, and most of my corvette screened to the trip in that battle. Believe me, it wasn't a victory, it's a thirty-year ceasefire. He sagged. Believe me when I tell you, Miss Herrick, you don't fight humans. Humans fight you. <laughs>